kitchen and the tomato season is starting full steam. I'm in Northwest Ohio, but the Southern Ohio tomatoes are coming up and that means for me, my tomato pies that I've been doing for the last 40 years, they're really good. Anyway, I'm Diane Rogers and I wanna show you some tips and tricks on how to easily peel a tomato, not only for the tomato pie, but peel peaches, just a real easy way to do it. And what I have going, now of course these are summer vine ripened tomato, they're not hothouse tomatoes, the skins are a little different. They're a little thinner on, on tomatoes grown in the field. And these peaches are South Carolina peaches. I buy them from a farmer friend of mine, Thurman's out in Grand Rapids, Ohio. And they're just really, really good. I used to be a Georgia peach fan, but quite a few years ago, I don't know, the South Carolina peaches are really hard. I know Georgia peach fans are gonna hate me for it, but the South Carolinas are really good. Okay, so having said that, what we do is we have a pot. It has boiling water in it. If the peaches, you don't ever really want to refrigerate your tomatoes. You want these always kept at room temperature. And peaches, you might have to refrigerate them depending on how ripe they are. And most farmers, when they sell the number ones, which is a premium um, product, they will put out the product or the peaches so that you'll have an extra day or two to ripen them. But I like to buy the number twos. They're a lot less expensive. They work great for pies for me. You can make peach jam, whatever you want to do with them. And you might have to do a little trimming on them but they're perfectly ripe and I don't care what anybody says if the tomato or the peach if they're not ripe if you have any green especially on the shoulder of the tomato what a pain in the butt it is to peel so on to the peeling part I like to do this with something a little bit more flat instead of a hard metal spoon that has a deep um, curve in it because it's a little more gentle when lifting tomatoes and peaches out. Now, doing tomatoes and peaches, they always seem to go kind of hand in hand for me during my baking season. I'm gonna do, so I don't have to do too many pots, the same, I'm gonna do the tomatoes first and then the peaches so that the peach fuzz doesn't get on the tomatoes. So, what I'm gonna do is this only takes a couple of seconds. If you can drop them in with your hand, fine, if not, lower them into boiling water. It only takes less than a minute and in about 30 seconds they're going to come out. If the peaches are stone cold then what you want to do is you might have to wait for the water to recoup a little bit. The boil did go down now it's a simmer but it's plenty hot enough for these so I'm gonna stick the last four in, and in a second they're gonna walk. Now contrary to what a lot of people say, that this has to go in, in ice water to be able to peel them, so not the case. And I know from a lot of experience in the peak of tomato pie season, I might go through maybe two, two um, 25 pound boxes of tomatoes a week, and then another 25 pound box of peaches a week. And so, and I've been doing this for so long, that I know pretty much what works. Now, the one thing that I will say, so the tomatoes are done, how simple is that? You know, even when I am, when I am making a tomato salad for myself or doing a caprese salad, anything that I do with a tomato, I always peel the tomato because I, it's just better. I'm gonna stick the peaches in. Now these are stone cold, so the temperature is gonna drop. If I were doing more than just these few, then I would definitely let the water recoup a little bit. You want to make sure that when all the tomatoes or all the tomatoes and or peaches are in the pot, that you have enough water to cover. If it's off by a little bit, then what you can do is just spin them around in the pot to cover them because that quick little blanch will make the spit the skin come off really easy. As a matter of fact came off how easy is that so that's all there is to it no ice water no nothing when I'm doing a lot what I'll do is put these on the stove in a much bigger pot but a flat flatter pot 
and then it doesn't take a deep pot, just a flat one. I, the pot usually for me fits seven or nine. I put seven or nine in and then take them out right away because by the time I get them in, then it's time to take them out. And let the water recoup. Then I put them all in the sink and I peel them in the sink. When I'm doing cold peaches, by the time I take them from my cooktop to the sink and dump them um, on one cold batch, then the water's usually recouped, time to take them out. Anyway, I can do a box of each in about 45 minutes. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna be doing that, but it is canning season, and I think it's a good year to be stocking up. The peaches are most easily done under some running water, a little trickle of cold running water because that will take these skins off really, really fast and easy. And just with a little limp and a little touch, I'm using a shorter paring knife, not a long pointed one, like that is quite a bit longer. It's got a sharper point on it. If you miss, it really hurts. Having said that, you just want to, you can usually do it with just your fingers. I like to use the knife because it's an extension of my hand and you just peel the skin off. And then that goes to the compost. And once in a while, if I have a little bit of trim to do, like I do on this one for a pie, I'll cut that out. That too goes to the compost for Chucky and the Chuckettes. They're my resident groundhogs. So. See how easy that is? It really just rubs right out. Now you don't want to leave these peaches in boiling water for too long because if you do, what's going to happen is the peach itself, when you cut it, and you can do these in advance. I always do mine in advance or refrigerate them. The longer you leave it in, the darker the ring will be around, whoops, the darker the ring is going to be around the outside of the peach where you know you're kind of cooking it so just boiling water in out and no matter what if the peaches are not you know you really can't push this if the peaches are not ripe there's nothing you're going to do to get the skins off easily i mean nothing so the best thing to do at that stage is you're better off just giving them the extra time, depending on how hot it is, to ripen up in these nice hot days that we've had up here, high 80s, 90 degrees, gosh, it's growing old. You know, they'll ripen. Actually, if I go pick them up in the morning, they're usually ripe by night. Um, now, I will say also that you can always tell if a peach has been, now see, this one isn't quite ripe. I put it in here, but see how it's green on the shoulder? This technically needs more time. And there is nothing, and you can even see when you cut it, how green it is here. Nope, not ripe. Part of this, no. So we're going to sacrifice this to Chucky. I want to tell you another thing about peaches, too. Um, I always wait early in the season. Uh, South Carolina peaches are available in May, you know, usually mid-May, June anyway. I usually wait until mid-June or later when the freestone comes in because if you're going to can these or make a peach melba or if you're going to turn them into a pie, I'm telling you, it's so much easier with freestones. You have no idea. So whoever you're buying them from, Ask them if ask the person, and there's really no reason to buy this unless you know your local grocer. Um, you should really be getting these at a farm stand because you can talk to somebody about the peach. Anyway, the free stone means exactly like that. The stone or the pit is free from the fruit, and it comes off so easy. The ones that are not clean free, oh boy. I mean, it takes forever to get them off the pit and then they get messy. So anyway, that's a little tip on buying peaches as well. But I strongly suggest buying them from your local farmer buddy. Too, it's a good way to get to know the farmers too. They like to talk about what they're selling. So I hope you enjoyed that quick tip too.
And God, they're just so good. I'm gonna sugar those and have them over some vanilla ice cream. Fresh raspberries that are starting to come in season. Little squeeze of lemon juice, topped with a little bit of sugar. However much you add is up to your personal taste. Little almond extract is always kind of nice in the peaches too, except these are really good the way they are. I always add almond extract to a pie, and after these sit for a little bit, they're gonna release a lot of juice that's perfect with ice cream. What a lovely dessert that is. Now, the tomato. Tomatoes, what you wanna to do to peel a tomato easily is you hold your knife like this, thumb, forefinger, at the blade, right at the blade. Put the knife in, put your thumb in at the root end of the tomato, or the stem end, I should say, of the tomato. Then you turn the tomato around the knife. I'm turning the tomato and holding the, holding the point of the knife into the center. Now this wasn't quite ripe around the shoulder because these are number twos. Having said that, and you can tell once you take the stem end out, it's a bit green. So I'm gonna carve that out a little bit because it's not what I want for a tomato pie. But again, see how easy the skin comes off? Just comes off like a piece of cake. This will actually be a good tomato for some baked eggplant, zucchini, some onions, and a little cheese thrown in. But see what I'm doing? I'm turning the tomato around the knife and the skin just slips right off. Might need a little help. And then the skin's gonna hit the compost bucket. I'll do that again. Here's a good one. Now here's one, and this is why they sell them as a two, because it has a little crack in it. Doesn't bother me, these are beautiful. They eat well, they eat just fine. Point of the knife in, I'm holding the knife. See, if you have too long a knife, then you'll end up cutting yourself because you do need kind of a sharp knife. Anyway, then thumb over the um, stem end, fine end, and move the tomato around the knife, around the crock parts, a little challenging, but that's all right. And then skin pops right off. Now, these are, so you can store them whole, or I just store them in a plastic container overnight so that when I'm ready to make the pie, I have them all ready to go. It makes a big difference when you're eating them for anything, whether it be a pie or a salad or whatever. Skin off is a much nicer touch. Or BLT, my goodness gracious. So isn't that wonderful? That is the tips on peaches and tomatoes. Basil. I had someone that was new to, obviously, growing or storing basil. And I thought I'd share this. Um, I grow my own, always have, love the stuff. Everybody should be growing it. Pesto season is now. I did a video on it. You want to take a look. If you let the basil go into late August and September, the leaf gets a bit tough. So now is perfect time to be doing that. But anyway, I always cut my basil with a bit of stem left on it so that it can easily go into just a little glass of water and set on the counter, just like flowers. If for some reason you have a very short stem, because when the basil first starts growing, before it starts growing wild, I just pick off the very top of it and keep it from going to seed so I don't have much of a stem. And sometimes I might just have a, a, a leaf or two. Now, if you put these in a little container, a little shallow container of cold water, they will pop right back up because as a matter of fact, these, this basil came out of a bag that I forgot to do something with, I don't know, a couple days ago, whatever it was, and they were really limp and I thought, no, I'm just gonna put them in water and see if they drink it up. Sure enough, they did, and I have lively basil again. So it's back to that waste not, want not, but that's a good way to do basil. Now, if you put this in your refrigerator, chances are it's gonna turn black on you because basil does not like cold at all, no two ways about it. And when I was making pesto for retail stores, when I would get in a couple pounds of basil, I would take it and almost triple wrap it and then put it in a bag, triple wrap it in newspaper, 
and then put it inside something else to refrigerate it. But it's not something I advise. The pesto that is on my um, website to teach you how to make, I do it with a mortar and pestle. If you've never done that, you really want to try that just once because what you're doing is releasing the oil from the leaf with the mortar and pestle instead of doing it in a food processor where you're cutting the leaf so you don't have the, all the oils. It really is good and actually by the time you get pasta cooked using a dried pasta, by the time it's cooked, if you have everything ready to go, pesto can be done and it's quite a treat in the summer. And then once summer's over, once the frost nicks this, it's over, done. And then once the sun starts going lower in September, then it starts to look like fall leaves. So, you know, then we move on to something else. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed those quick tips. Do subscribe to my channel or the Toledo Farmers Market channel. And every week I hope to put up a video or two to show you what's available, quick tips. And be sure to leave me comments. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Thanks for visiting. I hope you like this video. And until the next time, thanks for joining me.